For years, the mantra among thrifty gamers was, an i3 is good enough. In the early days of the Core i series, thread count was important, sure, but less so than single thread performance, and i3s could compete with higher end i5s and even i7s in that arena. These days though, things have moved on. The day of the dual core has come and gone. Left behind as i3s progressed from two to four cores and now even have hyperthreading. But perhaps you don't really believe this. Perhaps part of you's holding on to the hope that a dual core i3 could still play games if you keep your expectations low enough. In that case, I'm sorry to do this to you, but. In 2023, the i3-2100 might be better thought of as an overqualified socket protector. It's certainly cheaper than one, and almost certainly better at processing. In 2011, however, there were conversations around this chip as being the ideal budget CPU for gaming. It had a relatively low TDP, four threads and excellent IPC compared to earlier CPUs. In a review at the time, BitTech found it scored only 10% below the previous generation i7 Extreme in Crisis. Moreover, it retailed at just £90. More than a decade later, however, dual cores, even hyper-threaded ones, aren't often catered to by developers. Built on a dead socket, running on a dead RAM type and limited to an ancient PCI Express standard, retailers are reduced to giving these chips away. Mine was bundled with an H61 motherboard I bought for a project last year, but they sell for as little as 10p at CEX. You could buy 10 for a pound. My test platform for this one is a, a tiny bit overkill. The ASUS Sabertooth Z77 probably never thought it would see an i3 in its lifetime, but I saw it on eBay for £40 recently and snapped it up. This was a dream motherboard in 2012 and I still think it looks pretty good, though admittedly in a way that suggests it was designed for people who get turned on by things labelled as military grade. To give it a fighting chance, I'm running 16 gigs of DDR 1333 in dual channel, and the OS and games are all running off of SSDs. My normal go-to CPU test title is Valorant, a game that I've previously said values IPC and cache above thread counts. Well, either I'm wrong, or the i3-2100 doesn't have enough of any of them to keep Valorant happy. For a game which regularly sees even basic CPUs pull in excess of 144 FPS, 80 is atrocious. You might think I'm exaggerating, as 80 FPS in most other games would usually be pretty excellent, but you can see from the 1% and 0.1% scores that this is a pretty bad time. Looking back at this footage, I don't think I'd realised just how much of it I'd repressed. I don't remember capturing any of this gameplay. Battlefield 5 performs at about four times this frame rate on a quad-core i7 of the same architecture. While those CPUs also give pretty terrible 1% lows, even their 1% can be higher than this CPU's average. Yes, since recording this footage I've been told that DX11 improves the stutter, and I do plan to go back and test that again in the future, but if you think this i3 is somehow a hidden Battlefield beast, I'm sorry, it, it, it's really not. Using performance mode, Fortnite isn't putting much load on the GPU, so I'm used to the RTX 3070 not having much to do in this test. With the i3, I think I could probably have gotten the same FPS from a GT 1030. I ran the test at 1440 with 66% scaling, and the i3 managed 87 FPS on average, with 1% lows just above 30 and single digit 0.1%. Poor frame rates are kind of par for the Fortnite course, but still, these seemed worse than usual. Overwatch 2 is usually more of a test for the GPU at 1440 Epic settings. A 2012 i7 scores about 90% of the FPS of a 5th gen Ryzen after all. But it seems that even this game has limits. The i3 is only good for an average of 60 FPS, and 1% and 0.1% lows are low enough that it doesn't feel like 60. Dropping resolution to 66% scaling doesn't help at all, averages are technically up by 10%, but again, I don't think you'd believe it in actual gameplay. It's 
Spider-Man Remastered is the first of my open world AAA titles, and it seems almost cruel to test the i3 with RT enabled. Still, for the sake of completeness, the RT test delivers around 18.5 FPS on average. Naturally, that's not a good experience, but in reality, you're not going to be pairing the i3-2100 with an RTX GPU anyway. With RT disabled, the average FPS climbs to 33, but swings down as far as the teens. If you thought Spider-Man was bad, Cyberpunk's worse. Just a reminder, this is with an RTX 3070. It's definitely there, I didn't unplug it. With RT disabled and DLSS quality at 1440, the i3 can push about 19 FPS on average. Turning on RT and dropping DLSS to balanced costs an extra 5 FPS, so if for some reason you're playing Cyberpunk with this combo, I'd say just turn on RT. I mean, both are painful as hell to play, so you might as well get some pretty shadows and reflections to look at. The whole human eye can't see faster than 24 fps thing has been claiming squatters rights in my hippocampus for years now and it couldn't help but spring forth when i was testing red dead redemption 2 with a decade old dual core the i3 2100 can coax a cinematic 25 fps average but the one percent and 0.1 percent show that this is more of a hand cranked silent movie kind of cinematic experience I have this image in my head of Soulsborne fans being like John Pilgrim in Season 2 of The Punisher, whipping himself as punishment for the bad deeds he hasn't done yet. Obviously that's an unfair characterisation, I'm sure people who like Elden Ring aren't all sadists, but those who are should really try playing the game on an old i3. 25 FPS averages are of course relatively playable, but those single digit 1% lows strike when you least want them to. I include Civ 6's AI benchmark as kind of the entry to my synthetic results, mainly because I can't be asked to play the game to a meaningful point. 10.83 seconds per average turn doesn't seem too painful to me. In case you haven't seen that video yet, the i5-2500K only costs a less than a tenner and will shave 3 seconds off each turn. So, <laughs> uh, should you buy an i3-2100 in 2022? Mate, you shouldn't have bought it in 2011. <laughs> no, no that's, that's unfair. Like I said earlier, this CPU was a good option for single-threaded games at the time. It's just that even non-CPU intensive games these days need a little bit more than this i3 can give. Paired with something like a GTX 1050 or RX 560, you could have a good PC for classic games or indie titles, but if you wanted something cheap for esports or AAA games, this isn't it. If you're looking for a better option on Socket 1155, check out last week's review on the i5-2500K, which could be an ideal upgrade for about 10 quid. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.